Here is an other example source of an Nmap script. In addition to the code part, which is to execute the job of the script, it includes some additional sections such as description, categories, usage, author, license, type, etc. Instead of probing the script code to understand the details of an Nmap script, you can use script-help parameter of Nmap command. You will see the name, the categories, the link to deep search, and the description sections as the result of the script-help query. So you've heard me say it before, but I really need to emphasize the importance of the service and version detection once again in this Nmap scripting lecture. As you know, if you don't run the version detection, Nmap supposes that the default service is running on that port. In a script scan, Nmap supposes the default service is running on the port, so it runs the scripts as if they are suitable for that service. It's easy to see it in an Nmap query. Okay, open a terminal screen in Kali. I use netstat command to see the listening ports. As you see, SSH service is running, but it's not running on port 22. Instead, it's running on port 443, and as you know, 443 is the default port of the HTTPS service. So if I run a port scan for my colleague's port 443 without adding the version detection option, Nmap signs the port as running an HTTPS service. Now, if I add the SSH scripts in this query using script SSH asterisk, without the version detection, not any of the scripts run because Nmap thinks that the service is HTTPS, not SSH, and does not run the SSH scripts. So I call the latest Nmap query and add version detection using the S uppercase V this time. Look at that, SSH scripts are started. With the version detection option, Nmap finds that the service is SSH and not HTTPS. Very important. Okay, so SSH brute script takes a long time to run. We already got the point, so no need to wait for the results of the scripts.